Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. That's right. It is time. More college football previews. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. We've got a lot to discuss. It's not really a lot. I take that back. It's five teams. That's right. We went through Big 12 Part 1. Now we're going through Big 12 Part 2. Correct. Today's list, Oklahoma State, TCU, Texas, Texas Tech, and West Virginia. Let's go on and turn down the drums. Uh, although it does get me really amped up because football is here, man. Football is, is rocking and rolling. The show brought to you by BetNow.eu. Go check it out for yourself. BetNow.eu. Type it in your browser. Use promo code WINNING50 for a 50% deposit bonus. You are going to love it. I guarantee it. Great online sports book, great layout, great odds, great everything. You use that promo code WINNING50, winning 50, they will give you a 50% deposit bonus. I promise. They treat <laughs> us well. They treat you well. That's right. They make betting simple. It's perfect for recreation, uh, recreational gamblers. Go check it out. Betnow.eu is the web address. You ready to fire into this? We left off with Oklahoma. Yes, we did. That means that the next up will be the Oklahoma State Cowboys. 2018, they went 7-6. and six. Not great by any stretch of the imagination in Stillwater. They were 3-6 and six in the conference. They got five offensive starters returning, five defensive starters returning. Experience-wise, number 53 in the country, number five in the conference. I was so, just about to say, I'm going to bet they're right in the middle of everything. Right, right dead in the middle, yeah. Head coach Mike Gundy had three straight 10-3 and three seasons after the last 7-6 and six season, which was in 2014. Surprise, they went 7-6 and six last year. Does that mean 10-3 and three this year? <laughs> uh, we shall see. The new offensive coordinator, Sean Gleason, from Princeton, he will involve uh, more quarterback run option type stuff. And he is fascinating to watch. I mean, Princeton is unbelievable. Uh, what they did, they were just insanely creative. Really insanely creative. Uh, perfect for redshirt freshman quarterback Spencer Sanders. Running back, Chuba Hubbard. He returns one of my favorite players, both in name and the fact that he just runs hard. I was about to say, the, the, I mean, he's, he's a punishing running back. Yes, he certainly is. Uh, defensive coordinator Jim Knowles, his first defense was all over the map. They were number 112 in total D. I'll tell you this. After they destroyed Boise State, I really thought, okay, there's that Duke defense. There's the attacking, wild, just bananas kind of defense. And then it just kind of, who knows, it went poof. Nothing happened. Uh, I, either he didn't understand the personnel or... Uh, he I think asked, they got into Big 12 play. Well, or, or, or he asked them to do something that they could not do. That either way, they just hadn't learned... The yeah. schemes, I guess, as well. The the offense is so I give the Big Twelve a lot of crap all the time about just not playing defense. A lot of it is not only that they don't play a lot of defense because a lot of these teams don't, but the offensive scheming in the Big Twelve seems to be substantially surpass. They they seem to surpass everybody else in the, yeah. in, the, in the country. Yeah, no, you're right. That's where like the most innovative offices offenses, man. Um, well, I'll say this, are coming from, with, with Sean Gleason coming in, it's going to be even more crazy, right. which means Knowles has got to find a way to even stop the guys in practice. Well, right? he didn't really have to worry about that. Agreed, he's not going to play against his offense. No, but Nobody in the Big 12 is going to run like what they're running, so he doesn't really care. Although I think that some of them will. It'll just be... He's got to find a way to stop Oklahoma and Texas. Yes. That's you what are, he's got to do. You are exactly right. Um Year two in Knowles' defense should be better. The non-conference is light. The schedule should reach eight wins roundabout. Uh, go on and tell me first what uh, what you think. I got them eight and four. I wanted to have them higher. I I like Gundy a lot. I I, I kind of I like the trend where they have a down season. He always kind of bounces back, and uh, I don't know that they're going to get to double digits. Oh, I, I don't think so. I'd love to see it. It wouldn't I, upset it me sounds if it good, happened. Right? I mean, but the, I got them eight and four. The last time they went seven and six, they had, you know, three straight ten and three years. 
I'm not seeing that with them this year. Yeah, that's a little um, too much to ask, I think. Yeah, Oklahoma State, I, I've got them at 8-4. and four. Okay. Uh, I've got them beating Oregon State, McNeese, and at Tulsa. I've got them losing at Texas. I think this is a big-time game for Tom Herman. Yep, I completely agree with that. Beating Kansas State, I've got them losing at Texas Tech because I would expect them to win that, but it's a road game. I think Matt Wells is a really good coach. I got them beating Baylor at home. I got them losing at Iowa State. I got them beating TCU at home. I got them beating Kansas at West Virginia and a loss to Oklahoma. Now, they've got Oklahoma at home, but you got to do it regularly for me to to think that. This is where I disagree on that. I'm not saying they're going to beat Oklahoma. I'm not definitively saying that at all. I think this is a year I think they can catch Oklahoma. You get them at home, and... Oklahoma's coming off of this is the first year we're actually going to see what Lincoln Riley's all about. Now, this is his team completely. We talked about that when we did the Oklahoma breakdown. I think there's going to be chinks in the armor. I think there's going to be holes in there somewhere that you can exploit. That's your biggest rival. You've been bullied by him for the last several years. I just think at some point in time the bullying stops. Okay, okay. I can understand to that. To assume that you don't beat them all the time, which means you shouldn't beat them, is wrong. I, okay, okay. I do understand that aspect of it. However, if they're going to beat Oklahoma, you had them at what, 7-5? and 8-4. and four. Oh, you had them 8-4 and four I had them as eight well. And four. So where else do they lose? Well, I mean, I, I don't think it's impossible for them to lose to TCU. I don't think it's impossible for them to lose at Iowa State, Texas, and I just assume that they are. I guess are, Baylor. I mean, they've they, got Baylor at home. They but. are the type of team. This is one thing about Gundy. He always finds a way to lose a game he shouldn't lose. That's I true. I mean, you got him losing to Texas Tech. Yeah. I don't have him doing that. But, I mean, if I mean, they beat they, Oklahoma, yeah. they could easily lose that game. No, you're right. You're right. You're 100% right. So That, that makes absolute perfect sense. So, all right, move off of them. We both got, oh, they're over under, by the way, is seven. Yep. So we got them going over. Uh, the over is minus 130. The under is plus 110. So, of course, Vegas sides with us. It's more likely they go 8-4 and four than 6-6. Six and six. Next up, the TCU Horned Frogs. 7-6 and six in 2018. 4-5 in the conference. Not good. Returning starters, they got 7 on offense, 5 on defense. Number 85 nationally in experience returning. Number 7 in the conference. Head coach Gary Patterson. 167 and 63 in 18 years at TCU. Think about this. Think about all the stuff that has happened since Dennis Franchoni left for Alabama. Okay. And Patterson has been here that long. That long. That is insane. That's right. Right. So uh, he suffered through injuries, bad quarterback play, et cetera. But uh, his four previous seven and six or worse campaigns were followed with 10 plus wins. Number 107 scoring offense. They need a quarterback to emerge. Four starters on the offensive line. Uh, return two senior running backs. Wide receiver uh, Jalen Rager and Moore. Uh, they are all back. Number 24 total defense. Of course, Patterson's going to have a good defense, right? Correct. The number 40 scoring defense. They're going to remain pretty good with uh, senior quarterback Jeff Gladney and linebacker Garrett Wallow. Uh, it's all about the quarterback here. Sure. If Alex Delton or Justin Rogers can be effective... This team can easily hit 10 wins. Uh, I have got them very close to that. Me too. I've got them at 9-3. and three. All right, so we're seeing things way too much alike. We're, I've got them 9-3 and three as well. I love Gary Patterson. Last year, they led the world in turnovers. And it's just yeah, it, it's the exact opposite of what you think of or know of a Gary Patterson coach team. Well-disciplined, does everything right, does all the small things right. I have no idea. I couldn't explain it. Every week I kept thinking, well, the turnovers eventually have to stop. Yeah. Like, like it's going to regress back to the mean. They've turned the ball over 30 they, times. They, they in were the insanely the year. unlucky with that. At the end of the year, they won't, nope, and they never stopped. It yeah. just never quit. I don't know how, I don't know how we're going to fix that, but I think they've got to fix that. I've yeah. got them 9-3. and three. Well, I think better quarterback play will will alleviate the issue, well, right? Most of those turnovers weren't on interceptions. They were all fumbles. Oh, yeah. And it yeah. was from receivers. It was from running back. It was from quarterback. It was from everybody. But I think it was. I think a lot of it became uh, the instability issue, right? Maybe that was it. There and could so have been that. It, it was just it, last year was a bad year. 
Maybe a, leader, a bad year. maybe a leader on the field in offense could step up and say, just hold hold the team accountable yeah. without the coaches having to do it all. Exactly. I could see that. So now yeah, I will admit it is strange for us to pick a team to win nine games without really knowing who is going to emerge at quarterback. But, so much of that for me is just all in Gary Patterson. But they, they won seven games last year. With with a team that I thought was without a quarterback. complete chaos. Yeah. Offensively especially. Yeah. And the reason the defense struggled is because they would take two snaps, give the ball to the other team, and they're back on the field. Yeah. It, it happened frequently. The, when, uh, when that defense was able to get rest and the offense didn't score a lot but had longer sustainable drives against Ohio State, they dominated a really good offense. Yeah. And then – the turnover started happening. The defense stayed on the field at the end of the game over and over and over again, and Ohio State just said, ball game. Yeah. You, you can't make those mistakes against that level of competition. No, you're you're entirely right about that. Uh, the only losses that I have on the schedule are at Iowa State, at Oklahoma State, and at Oklahoma. Now, I've got them beating Texas. I've got them beating uh, uh, Purdue at West Lafayette. Um, you know, I, I think... You know, I got to win over Baylor. I got to win at Texas Tech. I got to win over West Virginia. They've got a, a nice home schedule. They do. They really do. But I mean, that's some that's some tough games. It, you will know early in week three when they go to Purdue. You will know whether this team is for real or not because that game will throw our entire prediction off. Oh, totally, totally. Well, it, and then the other thing we'll also know. You know, that game against Oklahoma is the second last game of the year. Yeah. If Oklahoma doesn't look like the standard Oklahoma, if Jalen Hurt isn't Baker Mayfield or Kyle Murray, Murray. Yeah. then then there's a really good chance they they do get that extra win. They do get to the double digits, and and they're competing for the the Big Ten. Uh, well, I guess the Big Twelve championship. Now I will say this: Vegas does not agree with us. I know that. Uh, seven and a half is the over under. Over is plus 120. The under is minus 140. So if you think, like us, that they are more of a nine-win team than a seven-win team, well, then you got a game and a half to play with here. I'm, I'm going to bet if you were looking strictly at analytics, a lot of those turnovers are going to show up on analytics. You can't just erase them. Yeah. And if it, it, I would say if they turn the ball over anywhere close, let's say it shrinks by a third, but it's still as bad as it was. It doesn't. They, they will not finish nine and three. They they will be closer to seven and five. Yeah, I think uh, I think I agree with that. So, next up, Texas Longhorns. Tom Herman's bunch went ten and four last year, seven and two. Now remember, I had them picked for the playoff last year. I know you did. I'm not going to go that crazy this time. Okay. All right. Now I, I I do believe that they are getting better, even with losing as much experience as they do. They've got five returning starters on offense. Two on defense. They got an That's, important one. Yeah. Um, on offense. Number 92 in the country and experience returning. That's not good. Number eight in the conference. Tom Herman, Mr. OK Cool, hook him. Uh, 17 to 10 in two years. He loses a ton of experience, but he replaced it with better overall talent that fits into his scheme, that does things the way that he wants them done. And I don't know that that can really be understated. Remember... The best coaches always seem to win early, right? Urban Meyer, Nick Saban, like those guys that come in and they win right off the bat because it's it's the mix of the experience and the changing of the guard, right? Quarterback Sam Ellinger, he's got wide receivers Colin Johnson and Devin DuVernay back. How did I, did I say that right? I don't know how to say that name. Either way. He got some good wide receivers coming back. That's right. Sophomore running back, Keontae Ingram. He averaged five yards per carry last year. Um, defense coordinator, Todd Orlando, number 67 total defense, replaces the entire front seven. That's where I think they're going to get hurt. And both of their cornerbacks. This is an offensive conference. And, and, and you your, lost your entire defense. And, and, and Herman, Herman is not the defensive guru. Yeah. He better put up the points like everybody else. Senior safety Brandon Jones, however, was their leading tackler last year. He is back. He's going to be a leader. He's going to be leaned on a lot. Uh, they don't have Maryland out of conference this year, so that's good. Well, I was just about but to say. But they do get LSU coming to Maryland Austin. with LSU. And so that's on uh, September 7th. There is enough talent to win the Big 12 this year. Yep. 
The over under is nine. The over is minus one hundred five. The under is minus one fifteen. I've got them at ten and two. I think they improve by a game in the regular season, and you know I've got a loss at TCU and a loss at Iowa State. I think they beat Oklahoma. I think they beat LSU. I think they beat, you know, they win at Baylor. They, you know, I I like this team. I like what Tom Herman is doing. I think even losing that much experience, this is a significantly more talented team than what he has had there already. You can see the wheels in motion. I like Texas this year. I've got them ten and two. I got them seven and two in conference. You liked them last year. I get that. And they and they were good last year. Nine and three. You know, had they not lost the uh, the Maryland game. Like they would have been ten and two again. I understand they did lose the Maryland game, but they did play in the Big Twelve title game. That's a first for them. Okay. <laughs> they 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 could they could easily be all those things. Okay, you're right. And there's more probable than not that they're going to be all those things because Herman is an excellent coach. They are a major program with incredible amounts of talent. But let me tell and, you, and infinite resources. Oh right? yes, yes, infinite. <laughs> infinite is a is a good word there. Infinite resources. My issue with Texas is this: there is one fan base, one singular fan base that has come after us harder than any other fan base for just simply picking against their school. We didn't hate on them. We didn't talk about how they were awful or terrible. Or whatever. We just didn't think they would win a game. They didn't attack our intelligence. They attacked us personally. That's true. And you know what? All of those Longhorns can go suck it. Okay? (laughs) I got them eight and four. I think they're going to lose every big game that they're going to play. They're going to play four meaningful games this year that are going to matter, and I think they're going to find a way to lose it. You know why? Because that fan base is soft. That (laughs) And I think a fan base represents the mantra of a team. Okay? Okay. okay. I, I I think you can look at teams now, uh, and look uh, at who. How do you feel about like Alabama and Clemson and and teams like because Clemson came out as pretty hard too. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think they were very thin skinned They just thought nobody was seeing them for the juggernaut that they really were. And and to be fair, they were right. And they were right. My problem is not what that we were wrong and they were right. My problem is how thin skinned somebody is. Yeah. Like, you just had this great season. We literally just picked a game against you. That's it. Yeah, and we, it was, and we it also was the, the other team, Sugar Bowl. The Sugar Bowl. Right. And the other team we picked, pretty damn good. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't know that, you know, anybody is wrong. Vegas had Georgia picked to win that game. Yeah, like, by two touchdowns. We're not, we, so, anyway, it's just one of those things where you're really thin-skinned if you're listening to Texas. If you're not, I don't care. If you are, <laughs> then great. You're really thin skinned. You need to get a little tougher about that, okay? And I think you're going to go eight and four. I think you're going to lose to Oklahoma. I think you're going to lose to TCU. I, I think you're going to definitely lose to LSU. Threaten me. Threaten me. Bet you, bet you won't show up in Austin. Gave me a location where I could get my ass whipped. I thought, all right. <laughs> That's not really smart, but okay. All right. There's a philosophy. I, I'm not a tough guy by any stretch of the imagination. There's a philosophy out there that says, yeah. You got to be tough to be dumb. That Texas got to be the toughest place in the world. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> Who Chris bringing the fire today. All right. So I got them 10 and 2. You got eight them 8 and 4. And four. Going to a bowl game. Come on, yeah. man. Yeah. 8 and 4 is not bad. They lost four games last year. But considering what they were under Charlie Strong. That's right. 8 and 4 is an improvement. Not, not after last year, though. I think Sam Ellinger is better than that. I, I, I really, he's a really good quarterback. He's, yeah. he's what's going to lead them, by the way. Yes. He's got I, crazy talent. He I do agree. All right. Next up, last two, Texas Tech, the Red Raiders, no more Cliff Kingsbury. We see this so different, I think. It's entirely possible. Because you have picked them to win a lot of games that I just don't think they're going to be able to do. Okay. I can understand that. Uh, I, they were very close in a lot of games last year. I think the defense is continuing to improve. Uh, Texas Tech went five and seven last year, three and six in the conference. They got six returning starters on offense, five on defense. Number twenty-four most experienced te- experienced team 
in the conference. I can't talk for nothing today. That's okay. I've missed it. Good Like gracious. nine words so far already. The over-under is six, and it is minus 110 on both sides. So Vegas kind of sees this right on it, right? New head coach Matt Wells, 44-34 and 34 in six years at Utah State. He steps into a pretty talented roster that was close to breaking through under Kingsbury. New offensive coordinator David Yost, he's going to run – his version of the air raid, right? It's uh, the same thing. I mean, Utah State led the country in scoring last year. So, and what he's got with sophomore quarterback Alan Bowman, uh, he can lean on that. They've got four out of five offensive linemen back. Their skill experience is through the roof. New defensive coordinator Keith Patterson, he's got to revamp the defense, but his game plan allows for like ball hawking opportunities. And I mean, this much, like it. With what he had at Utah State, he had 32 turnovers, 22 interceptions at Utah State last year. I mean, that led the country. That was, and, and they're going to be able to do a lot of the same stuff at Texas Tech, right? Because they're going to have to take more risks. So, uh, Lord, uh, linebacker uh, Jordan Brooks and Rico Jeffers, they combined for 144 tackles last year. They need to lead this defense. The defense has to improve in order to have a winning season. I think they will. I think Matt Wells is an incredible coach. Uh, I've got him at 7-5. and five. I've wow. got him over the six wins that Vegas has it set at. This has to be the biggest chasm that we have between picks. Okay. I mean, we can. I've got him 4-5 and five in conference. I've got him winning at Arizona. I've got him beating Utah, beating uh, Montana State. Loss at Oklahoma. A win over Oklahoma State. A loss at Baylor. I've got him beating Iowa State. I've got them winning at Kansas, but then I've got a loss at West Virginia, a loss to TCU, a win against Kansas State, and then a loss against Texas. So early in the season, I've got them sitting at six and two before they go to West Virginia, and I think that that's the, I think that's the big game that Neil Brown gets because at six and two, everybody looks at Texas Tech as oh Matt Wells has got it rolling like this is, but I think that Neil Brown is one of those so at. The way I view the schedule is a little crazy. I think Texas Tech was this close to being really good under Cliff Kingsbury, and I think that this coaching staff can take them to that next level. So this is a philosophy problem that I have with the team. Okay. okay. I, I'm i good with head coaches doing really well at lower-tier programs and getting promoted up into the Power Five. I always appreciate that and I think a lot of them can do really, really well. Here's what doesn't have any track record of success. When you take your entire staff from that small school and you bring them to the big school, listen, there's a reason that your entire staff, if your offensive coordinator was good enough to be in the Big 12, he would have already been there. If your defensive coordinator was big enough to be there, they would have already been there. I I think this is a problem. Arkansas had this problem. They hired uh, Morris. SMU, he I brought think, he brought his entire staff. Yeah, but that's they a little different. Looked, I, why? Why you just you because think they, you're looking at those individuals and you're saying they're different? But at the end of the day, the philosophy stays the same. And Arkansas is not the only example throughout history. But it just doesn't usually work out early when you take a staff at a lower tier school and you bring them the entire group over to a big tier school and you say compete with all these guys head coaches leave all the time and then they get new coordinators that are more qualified than their previous coordinators yeah, but, but, uh, and when they anybody build a program who was he going to get to go to lubbock well there's a bunch of people in it that that i think would take that job i don't i, I don't think, know them I, by name i think his staff at utah state was was pretty good i'm not knocking um, them i don't think that they're not good at utah state <laughs> I just think history. I think history. I have them. I have them four and eight. I think history shows us that this is not going to work well. Four and eight. Okay. I mean, you you could be right. I, you could feasibly be and right. And like I said, it's strictly a philosophy thing. On it just doesn't bode well when small. Herman didn't take his guys from from Houston to Texas. I, like, yeah, I mean, like, he took Todd Orlando. But but Major Applewhite, his offensive coordinator, actually got the job at Houston. There's nobody in the world that thinks that Major Applewhite would have been an offensive coordinator at Texas, right? I mean, he he was at one point. He was the offensive coordinator at Alabama under Saban in his first year. <laughs> Applewhite got promoted 
way too early on a lot of things, and he just and and we realized and we realized, yeah, that's not what he he doesn't need to be a power power five coach. Yeah, like this is like there's just a step up in class that's harder to reach. Yeah, that's that's all. It's strictly it's not a knock on those guys. It's just a philosophy because I don't know anything about them. I know what they did at Utah State. But I can't take that and translate it to what they're going to do at the Big 12. What quarterbacks are they playing now that they weren't playing then that were turning the balls over to that great defense? I mean, you might be right. The quarterback play here and the offensive scheming in this conference is going to be way better than anything that they've ever seen. Hey, you're you're right. You're right. I, it's just, it, like I said, it's strictly a philosophy. And I, I'm not, if I hired, if my team are a team that I liked, I love Neil Brown. I'm so glad that Neil Brown got the West Virginia job. We're probably going long. I'm going on rants. But (laughs) I don't think it would have been smart for Neil Brown to pack his entire staff from Alabama and take them to West Virginia because I don't think they would succeed there. You might be right. But I think Neil Brown is a leader of men, and he's an offensive genius, and he's a really good coach, and he can hire other coordinators that are more qualified than the people that were behind him. Uh, It's It's just that philosophy. Okay. Okay. Anyway. No, I, I'm with you. I'm Man, with you. We're, we're pretty far off. Um. Yeah, we're pretty far off. And so I, I've got them seven and five. You've got them four and eight. Get them four and eight. Now we got about four minutes to knock this one out. West Virginia. A lot of change. Eight and four last year. Six and three in the conference, which is crazy. I I think in one of the previous things I said that they were a ten win team last year. They were not. They no. eight and four. Can, uh, does anything they do last year make matter today? No, not that any team, That team literally is so different. They've got uh, four offensive starters returning. They've got five defensive starters back. Number 119 in the country in experience returning. Number 10 in the conference. That is dead last. Dead last, yep. Head coach Neil Brown. The over-under here, by the way, is 5.5. The over is plus 135. The under is minus 155. So Vegas... It's that hook. Yeah, Vegas tends to side on the... Five wins or under. under, Um, Neil Brown, 35 and 16 at Troy. He walks into a roster that is in transition, and they have a brutal schedule for the foreseeable future. Their out-of-conference schedule is ludicrous. Quarterback Austin Kendall, um, look, they they got him from Oklahoma, and you would think that he is the guy, right? But Kendall did not really separate himself from uh, Miami transfer Jack Allison. They've got running backs and wide receivers stacked up, but offensive line has got some serious holes to fill. Defensive coordinator Vic Kenning, he runs a 4-2 look with hybrid players, but it is a roster built for a 3-3 stack. So what do they end up running? Because they don't have the proper personnel to do what Kenning wants to do, which, by the way, he brought Kenning with him from Troy. He did bring Kenning with him from Troy. um, Former five-star Alabama linebacker Van Darius Cowan uh, he should be the most talented player on that defense. He should be able to step in and, and make a significant difference pretty quickly, so long as they know what they're going to run with, with what personnel, right? Correct. So the non-conference scheduling is going to be rough on this coaching staff. Uh, the conference schedule is pretty well split this year, but I don't like their chances of succeeding this season. Uh, they do have Austin Kendall for another year after this. I believe. Isn't yeah, right? they've got they've got two transfers that that should have two years of eligibility. So I I do like I like Neil Brown. I think that they get NC State in the off season, like or not the in the uh, right. out of conference slate, yep. right? But other than that, I mean, I've got them winning at Kansas. I've got them beating Texas Tech. I got them losing to basically everybody else. Non conference. Like I've got them four and, and NC State is tough. I've got them four and eight. I've got them two and seven in the conference. Yeah. All right. I love Neil Brown. Yeah. Love, love, love Neil Brown. I got him five and seven. I'm one game better than you, and a lot of it is the same philosophy. I'm not a fan of bringing your defensive coordinator. I, what he did at Troy is just not what he's going to have to do in the Big Twelve. Yeah. And here's the problem. Both of those guys are defensive guys. Yeah. If if the head coach was a defensive guru guy, which the Big 12 just doesn't do, and and they brought their OC with them, I would I would feel differently. In the Big 12, you cannot bring somebody that is unproven against 
the best offenses in the country and play against these 10 teams. Now you're you're right. That that's just my fear and philosophy. No, so. I think I think you're right. All right, go over to winningcureseverything.com, go over to betnow.eu. We appreciate you checking out the show. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share the show out. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave a nice review. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.